Good day, students. Today we are going to have a closer look and a holistic approach on finance grade 12. And let me warn you here for three years, do not spend the luxury of your time on this section unless if you are not weaponized and principled to the T. My understanding of the basic fact is that grade 11 and 12 finance are going to be tested interchangeably on the premise of the view that they are heavily interconnected in many ways. And please, if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more mathematics content in a Mzansi context. Let's check what we have here in question 7. We are saying that uh, 7.1, let me put it here, that is 7.1. A company bought a new machine for 500000 After three years, the machine has a book value. Please get that. The machine has a book value. Sometimes they will say the machine has a scrapped value. Uh, that means the amount, um, uh, it went down. It's the issue of depreciation primarily. They are now saying calculate the yearly rate of depreciation. They are looking for the, um, the rate of depreciation. If the machine was depreciated, according to them, reducing balance method. So here you, you are given the issue of um, reducing balance and the principal amount is given and that is your P. The amount that you buy with, um, that is your P. And then this one is the amount that was uh, depreciated, but on a reducing balance. So you are looking for, for your I, you have the number of years in there. So this will be very easy, by the way. I'm not expecting a grade 12 learner to really struggle here. But however, I'm going to do it um, with you guys. Let's check uh, question 7. Let me just write everything here. That we are now doing question 7. And that is primarily 7.1. They are saying, well, we have to use a reducing balance method. So we are going to say, well, we are going to get A. That is equals to the principal amount into 1 minus i raised to the nth power. That is your reducing balance where your a is the uh, amount that was depreciated and uh, this one is the principal one. But in the compound interest, this a is your accumulated amount. So you are given a, so your a is this one. So I'm going to substitute everything and solve for i algebraically. Let's check. Uh, your a that is um, 3 3 1 and then a 5 2 7 that is going to be equals to p your p is 500,000 so it's 500,000 let me check uh, yeah that is 500,000 1 minus i you are looking for i raised by your your n and it's compounded um, piano you know, you get uh, 3 there for your n. And you want to solve for i. So you're going to use the basic algebra here. That is to say, you're going to divide both sides by 500,000. And if you do that, algebraically, you are going to uh, have 1 minus i raised to the power 3. That is going to be equals to 3, 3, 1, 5, 2, 7 divided by 500,000. Well, you want to solve for i. I think this is a takeaway. You are going to take the cube roots on both sides of the equation. And that is 1 minus i is equals to um, this amount just right here. Let me copy it and put it here. But this time around, I need to raise it by, um, by 1 third. That is 1 over 3. It's the cube roots. You take the cube roots on both sides of the equation. And um, I advise you that you don't round it. No. Rather, uh, you can take your eye this side and bring this one that side. So you have to make I subject of the formula here. That means your I is going to be equals to, uh, let's check. If you do that, this is going to be 1 minus um, the whole of this um, situation. I'm just going to really put it here. And really just take it a bit down there. So uh, let's check what you get. You may use your calculator here. So your i is going to be equals to, if you type this uh, on a calculator, um, check what you get. Please type it properly. 
and uh, you should be able to get uh, 0, 0.1, 2, and then 8, 0, 0. And this will really continue uh, on your calculator. Now you need to get uh, the actual R, where you need to multiply this uh, number there by 100. So you're going to get uh, 12, um, 12, 80 uh, percent into this small places you're going to get a 12,80 percent or is 12,8 percent so that is worth three marks and uh, that is worth uh, three marks in the exam well let's check the next question they are saying that uh, 7.2 Musa takes a personal loan from a bank to buy a moto a motorcycle that cost 46,000 so what is happening here is that we are dealing with the issue of a loan. So if you deal with a loan or the bond, you are dealing with the present value annuity. All right. So they are giving you the value of the P, that is the loan. The loan is 46,000, that is your P. The bank, um, the bank charges interest um, at 12% per annum, compounded uh, monthly. Please get that. It's compounded uh, monthly. How many months will it take Musa to repay the loan if the monthly installment is 1.9? That is 1,900. So they are giving you the installment and that is X. But first thing first, let's write what we have just right here before we get confused. So 7.2, we are given the value of P and that is 46,000. So we are given 46,000. You are also given uh, the interest rate. Let's check the interest rate. Uh, that was 24% there. So you can write that in, in decimal. Remember that uh, you primarily deal with uh, your decimal for your I, right? So that is the same as 0 0.24. So your I is 0 0.24. What else do you need? You also need X. X is given there. They said it's 1.9. That is your X. It's the installment. That is uh, 1,900. And then uh, you are looking for the number of payments. And I need to warn you here for the number of payments. In regards to the number of payments, when you're dealing with the present value annuity, you are primarily dealing with the number of, um, you're dealing with, with months. But in the future value, you are dealing with years. No, you are dealing with years. So you must divide whatever you're going to get by 12 to get uh, the number of payments there, which is going to be your end. But here, uh, because the loan, the loan here is granted uh, one period. If you are to remember how the loan really work on your present value annuity. So what I would do is I'm going to use the, form, the formula for the uh, future value annuity. That is P is equals to uh, your X into, you are going to get uh, 1 minus uh, 1 plus I raised to the power negative N. You close that. That is going to be divided by, let me divide it by your I there, where you have everything. So your P is 46,000. That is going to be equals to let's check um, our i our i is 0, um, 0,24 but this was compounded eh? this was compounded a eh, monthly please uh, check that that is compounded a eh, monthly right there so i'm going to divide my interest rate by by 12. it's compounded monthly i hope you know that situation so let's let's see what is our x our x we said here it's 1.9 so that is 1900 into uh, 1 minus um, this is going to be 1 plus 0, 0.24 divide this by 12 so that is primarily going to be a 12 then all raised by what by negative n you close that and then you can really enlarge this line here and then divide by i, which is the same as uh, this value here. So I just need to copy it again and put them. So remember, you are looking for uh, n. 
so you're going to be very careful here first let me clear fractions and um, divide uh, by this one by that i mean i'm gonna multiply throughout by this value here and divide by this one so if i do that i'm going to be uh, having what i'm going to be having um i'm going to be having one minus uh, one plus zero comma two four divided by 12 raised to the power negative n please guys pay attention here what then happen is that uh, i'm gonna multiply this with this one and divide by 1.9 i hope that algebra is is well captured so that is a 1.9 and then um this should be 0 comma 24 divided by 12 you multiply this by 46,000. This is how you really um, go about this one. And then uh, let's check uh, how you go about it. Now you are going to be having what? Um, let's check. This is going to ties down to. Um, you can take this one, that side, this one there. Because I don't want to round off to, um, to some decimal because I don't want to make any mistake. So this this means that um, I'm going to get uh, 1 plus uh, 0, 24 divided by 12 raised to the n. And then I'm going to take this one, that side, and divide by negative at the same time. So this will be, this will be, if I take it that side, it's going to be negative. Divide by negative, it becomes positive and then a minus um, this situation here. This situation. I advise you that uh, you be careful there. So I'm going to type um, those things there on the left side. Let me type it on my calculator. This should be very easy. And then uh, we'll see what we get there. Let me type it. So that is 1 minus, and then uh, this should be 0, 0,24 uh, over 12. I'm trying to type it here in my calculator. And then um, let's check that. Multiply by 46,000. And then this whole thing must be divided. This must be divided by so it's 46,000. I'm just trying to type it uh, in my calculator there. to divide this by 1.9 and then um, let's check and then uh, I'm getting uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a uh, 49 over 95 i'm getting 49 over 95 so i need to solve for n so i'm gonna take the log on both sides so this will be this should give me uh, n is equals to the log of uh, 1 plus 0 comma 24 over 12 which is primarily this one and then of uh, what I got here, that is 49 over 95. Please make sure you are able to do this log stuff. And that is going to give you uh, 33,43. And then this will be 2765. And uh, you get what? You get 44 there. 
so this is in months uh, it's what you should get it's what you guys must know so this stuff here it's in months so you are going to say therefore uh, n is going to be equals to you are going to add one to this one so that is going to be 34 months so this is 34 months you can also write in words that um, it will take it will take him 34 months uh, to pay back uh, the loan so that's 34 months 34 months to pay back the loan the loan of that automobile so here the main goal is to be able to identify the correct formula and uh, how to really um, work it out the algebra should be should be prioritized here it's very much important so this is how you're going to get um, that four marks we want to get uh, the last one what are they saying there they are saying nail set up an investment fund exactly three months exactly three months uh, later and every three months thereafter he deposited he deposited a uh, 3.5 that is 3500 into the fund so this money was deposited that is your x by the way we are dealing with the investment so when you deal with investment and um, and savings, you are dealing with the future value annuity. When you deal with the bond and the loan, you are dealing with the present value annuity. So now they are saying that um, exactly three months later and every three months thereafter, it deposited uh, 3.5 into the funds. So this one was deposited the the fund pays interest rate or uh, at uh, seven point five percent per annum compounded quarterly so uh, there it's also quarterly you need to be very careful that means you're going to divide by four the interest rate he continued to make quarterly deposit into the funds for six and a half years like i said with the future value annuity we are dealing with years and in in um in, in the present one, we are dealing with months. Now, they say for six and a half years from the time that he originally set it up. They now say, Nail made no further deposit into the fund, but left the money in the same fund at the same rate of interest. Calculate how much you will have in the fund 10 years after he originally set it up. In finance, it's it's a, it's not a sin to read it three times if you don't get it in the first place. This one, it seems like uh, there's a timeline from grade 11 because they are saying he nail made no uh, further deposit into the funds. And you can see that uh, there is a six and a half years and they're also now saying 10 years. So, is the issue of grade 11 now to look at your timeline and remember you are dealing with the future value annuity to begin with because of the term investment and um, sometimes they are going to mention the issue of savings savings and investment is primarily the future value annuity but if they talk about the loan and the bond and uh, something if you want to withdraw the money now um, that is going to be a present value annuity and they're going to ask you also the balance outstanding here they're asking us about the timeline so let's check how we're going to do that i'm going to read it again uh, 7.3 they are saying nail set up an investment fund so this was set up exactly three months later and every three months thereafter a deposit uh, 3.5 it's plus in a timeline this is going to be a positive situation but if 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 we withdrew 
it was going to be minus. So now if we, if, if, if we deposit or invest, the amount becomes positive in our timeline. I hope you understand the timeline. I'm going to show you how to deal with this. The fund pays interest rate of what? Of a... Uh, 7.5 percent and it remains constant in the same fund compounded quarterly you continue to make quarterly deposit into the funds for six for six and a half years from the time you originally set it up so what i will do is i will say to myself well um 7.3 i'm gonna have a t naught for the starting part of it uh, up until uh, I get to T, six and a half. So six and a half is primarily 6.5. That is a six and a half, yes. And then um, this one is depositing 3.5. So I'm going to write it's positive. This is a positive amount of 3.5. Then, well, the interest rate remains constant in this duration. Let's check the interest rate. That is your I is equals to 7.5% and that is 0, 0.075 divided by quarterly. That is 4. All right. So this is a T of a six and a half years. Now, let's check uh, something there. So that was your, let me do this. This was your T naught to, to T6.5. I wanted to, to check uh, something. They are now saying, they said something very important. Here, yeah. they are saying, Nail made no further deposit into the fund, but left the money in the same, in the same fund at the same rate. Calculate how much he would have in the fund 10 years after he originally. Uh, set it up so 10 years after so let's check from from um, this region all the way to t10 so this is going to be t10 all right and remember that uh, the interest rate remains constant here the interest rate in this duration it remains a constant they said uh, it remains the same I'm just going to put it there as well. Well, uh, the money which was left in the account, it's basically the money in here. And that is the future uh, value. That is the future value. So what they are looking for is the amount just right at the end of uh, 10 years. There. So how are you going to do that? So they are looking for this F. First, you get that F. And then from this F from here, you can and also be able to get your, your N. Your N here is going to be uh, is this duration. That is 6,5. So this is going to be 6,5. And then here, your N is going to be equals to, you say, 10 minus 6.5. That is going to give you 3,5. That is your N. So I'm going to do this by means of um, timeline. I'm going to find what is my F first at 6.5. So I'm going to say, well, my future value at this point, that is the, it's the fund there. That is going to be equals to F into, we are now in the future value annuity. That is X into a 1 plus I raised to the power N minus 1. You have to really divide this by your I. So what is your X? That is the amount which was really deposited every month. And um, that is really 3.5 into 1 plus I. Your I is 0, 0.75. Divide this by, by 4. So you write uh, 0, uh, 0, 0.075. Divide this by your 4. And then what is your N? Your N in this duration is 6.5, but this is quarterly. So this is going to be um, 6.5 multiplied by 4. And then you subtract 1 there. You close that. You divide this stuff by your I. 
UI is the same as this one, doesn't really change. I'm just going to put it there. And you should be able to type it in your calculator. And uh, you need to, to be very careful when you type that. So that is going to give you 115,000. But this is one, it's, 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 it's money, so you must put your R. It's 115,000 there. And then uh, you write comma 69. So this is the amount of money which was left here. So it means here you get F is equals to 115 there. And then uh, that is 10,000 or to the comma 69. So what they are looking for is uh, this amount here. Let me just do this. What they are looking for is, uh, is the value of A there. 10 years after I originally did that. So this value here becomes your P because it is the it becomes now your initial amount, the principal amount. And then they are looking for this one. So you can calculate uh, this region. Your N there is 3.5 and then your P is that one. It becomes your P and then uh, that is your A which you are looking for. You know, so you are going to use the... Um, the compound interest formula because it's compounded quarterly and then uh, let's do that so we are going to say therefore a is going to be equals to p into one plus i raised to the power n well uh, we get p so p is basically this amount which is the future value there which was left all right in the same rate that is this rate in there. So this is really going to be uh, 115902,69 into your one plus i. What is your i? Your i remains constant at the same rate and that was 0, uh, 0 0.075, divide this by four, you can see it's still here. And then you raise this by n, what is your n? Your n in this duration that is 3.5. So you are going to write uh, 3.5, 3.5 multiplied by uh, quarterly that is 4. So this is what they are looking for here. So it's a matter of you typing it into your calculator and you should be able to get 150,000 and something there. This is how you're going to work out uh, this problem and thank you very much for watching it's a very easy paper that you should have um, gotten it if you were in the exam for this paper of 2017 and thank you very much for watching see you next time